them. And these are uh, mostly super skinny, super tall towers that are going up that are going to rival uh, any skyscrapers that we've seen um, in New York City so far. These are buildings that are going to exceed uh, one World Trade Center in height, uh, some of them quite possibly by a lot. Uh, they're often uh, narrow buildings. They're usually luxury rental, uh, uh, I'm sorry, luxury uh, condo buildings. Um, mm -hmm. And in Midtown, those are all arrayed on what uh, has been called, of course, derogatorily, uh, billionaire's row because of right. the kind of clients who are buying these, um, buying these condo developments. So there is some anxiety about these uh, buildings. One, because they're so tall. Um, they, uh, according to critics, block um, important views. Uh, they maybe block out the sky uh, from 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 certain ground views, and uh, because they potentially introduce uh, new, uh, even wealthier um, residents into Manhattan, uh, which causes some concern among residents. But I don't think it's anything right, to be right. to be afraid of. Right. And so some of these condos, um, the ones on the top floors of the buildings that are still under construction and some that have recently been completed, some are selling for um, $90 million. Right. And they're breaking records seemingly every week. You know, some of these buildings are costing a uh, billion dollars to build and then, you know, selling out for, you know, multiple, or I don't know if any have actually reached more than a billion, but... Um, you know, they're all very profitable. And tell us about who are the people who are buying, you know, buying a condo for 90 or $100 million. Um, well, I don't know them personally, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, I don't I've, run I've, never met, I've never met any of them either. I don't run in that circle, but um, these are, you know, what you call the pied a terre. They're um, billionaires from around the globe. Uh, new wealth and money being created in uh, Russia in Brazil, in China, and the Middle East. Um, the brick nation buyers, I think, are um, the way that I often read these billionaires being uh, as being characterized. Um, mm -hmm. and so brick, brick referring to Brazil, Russia, uh, India, and China. That's right. Um, so the, the thing is, is that they're not uh, said to be living in these places. This is um, a, a residence that they might, um, might actually... Uh, live in for a day or, or two a year, um, such <laughs> apparently is the life of a, of a, a billionaire jet setter. Um, <laughs> and, and that, and that has people concerned, um, you know, that they're not, um, they're, they're not being taxed sufficiently for what, um, they're purchasing or the changes that they are bringing, um, to, to Manhattan. It's not usually the way critics express it. I never really hear critics say that they're not being taxed appropriately, but that sounds to me, what what the problem is is that they're bringing change to Manhattan. Other Manhattanites fearful of um, this change, and uh, they don't they don't think these developments should proceed or are worthwhile. Right. So I guess the the critique is along the lines of you know these super rich are building these palaces in the sky. Uh, some of them are you know they're reshaping the Manhattan skyline, which is obviously iconic. Some of them are. Um, some of these new buildings, since they're on 57th Street, are near Central Park, and uh, they cast shadow over uh, the southern parts of Central Park during certain parts of the year. So, you know, the sun is being blotted out by the uh, penthouses of the rich. And, you know, the and some of these people are buying them as investment properties or trophies. They're not living in them. So these giant buildings are uh, seemingly, some of them at least, going to be largely empty almost all of the time. And right. uh, and the, the wealthy are not uh, contributing their fair share for what they're extracting from the city. So, I mean, what's what's your response to that kind of critique? Well, those are all legitimate concerns. Um, I think that some are a little bit more pressing than others. Um, you know, I, I mean, so you, you don't really want um, large vacant buildings, but I don't think that these are going to to um, generate any of the problems that are usually associated with with vacancy. In fact. Um, Building large towers where no one is really living full time is maybe good from the infrastructure perspective, from the impact that they're going to have on, say, the subway uh, or the power grid. Um, right, right. So these, so these buildings, even though they, you know, some of them are a hundred or more stories tall, but they're um, a lot of them are one or two apartments per floor because they're very thin. So right. you know, a, a, some of these buildings may house at most a couple hundred people, you know, even if everyone was actually living there. 
Yeah, this is something the um, architect Gordon Gill uh, told me during the interview, is that if you think of a skinny tower, well, as you go up that tower, the elevators don't get skinnier, the um, air shafts don't get smaller, the mechanicals right. that you need stay the same size. So really, after a certain height, you are talking about um, one penthouse unit per floor. So this isn't a major um, tax on the infrastructure. What it is, is it it's a lost opportunity to um, tax this incredible wealth. That's something that Mayor Bloomberg said when um, these developments start, first started to pop up and there was some criticism going with it. And he said, no, this is a fantastic opportunity. What we exactly want are billionaires moving in, whom we can then tax uh, for services that we can apply throughout the rest of the city. That means generating new infrastructure. That means um, creating affordable housing, um, developing fortifications against future uh, hurricane Sandys. There's all mm -hmm. kinds of applications. It's just that property tax alone is too limited to um, capture the kind of tax potential that um, that these billionaires represent. And if I sound a little bit vampiric, uh, I, I guess I just have to cop to it. I absolutely think that it's worthwhile um, to, to tax them a, a greater share. And that is, uh, one of the proposals that de Blasio is considering now.